Hello and welcome to my channel, Making Crafts. Today I'm going to be making a fun little card using some items that I ordered from the Rubber Buggy. And the first item is this pack of washi tape, and this is from 49 and Market, and it comes with four rolls. I am also going to be using this Magnolia stamp, and this is a happy birthday stamp. It is just the sentiment only that comes in this pack. And I will link to all of these products below. They all came from the Rubber Buggy, and this is my design team project for the Rubber Buggy. I'll also be using this um, Stampers Anonymous set by Tim Holt, and this is the Exquisite set. And this one was for Halloween, but I'm going to use it year-round. I'll also be using some of the Distress Crayons, and I'm going to be using these Pink Fresh stamp pads. And the stamp pads are actually in the clearance section at the Rubber Buggy, so they're, they're on sale. So I have several card fronts cut out here, but we'll just make one together today. So for this card, I'm going to start out with the exquisite stamp set from Tim Holtz, and I'm going to be just using the floral stamp. And I know this one came out during Halloween, but it is, um, these flowers I think can be used year round. I'm also going to use a piece of scrap paper behind my card blank or my card front so that I can just stamp off the edges onto that. So for this card, I am also going to be using four different colors from the Pink Fresh stamp pads. So I'm going to use the two lighter colors that's in each pack. So this is more of a red pack, but these are, I think, more coral, more pinkish color. And then in the turquoise blue pack, I'm going to be using the two lighter colors as well. I thought these colors went perfect with the 49 and Market um, rub-ons and the 49 and Market washi tape that just recently came out. So I'm gonna start out by just applying the lighter of the pink ink to my stamp. And I'm just going to stamp in, just fill in a little section of the stamp with the lighter pink. And then I'm going to come back in with my darker pink coral pink kind of color and fill in another little section of the stamp. And you don't have to have a straight line here. You can kind of blend it however you want to do. So if you're going to blend yours, you definitely need to use the lighter stamp pads first and then the darker ones. So here I come back in with my darker blue and then I'm going to get my lighter blue. So I should have started with my lighter blue and then the darker blue so that if I'm wanting to, um, if you want to protect your stamp pads, I've just learned through the years that by saving everything and um, not using it or not really enjoying the way I want to use it, that it's just a waste to even have it. So I just use it up and, and I don't worry about it. But I will say, if you want to protect your stamp pad, do all the lighter colors first and then the darker ones. So now I'm just going to stamp the edge of my card front. And I'm just deciding which way I want my stamp to be aligned. I don't know that there's a right or wrong way with this stamp if there's a, you know, up or down, but I'm just stamping it sideways this way and this is the part I wanted on my card. Now this is just the background of the card, so if you don't get a perfect stamping for this, if it's, you know, if part of it doesn't stamp well, it's okay, which I really liked how it stamped. I got the whole image, but this is just the background. We're gonna cover it up a lot, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now I'm going to use some of the new Distress inks that um, I ordered, and these work perfectly as well. These are, none of this was supposed, the Pink Fresh and the Tim Holtz, it's not really designed to go with the new 49 and Markets um, set, but I'm gonna have to be honest, I think it matches this set so well that um, when I ordered, that's why I ordered the, the crayons as well as, um, some of the items this month, even though they're not all in the 49er market, I thought they all went together really well. So I just used my Distress Crayon and just a little bit of water on a paintbrush just to flick off some um, of the color from the blue crayon. And so by doing so, it's just adding some splatters to your card. And I love doing splatters this way. Now with the lighter color, and I don't remember the name of this color, it's so light that it doesn't really show up as well to, um, to flick it off. I did get a little bit on my card, but it's not as, as dark as the blue. It's so light that it's hard to show up. So 
So I'm just gonna wipe up my blue here where I laid the blue pen. It had some, or the blue crayon. I keep calling it pen, but it is a crayon. But where it had some water on it, it did run off on my mat. So I'm just gonna wipe it up. And then I'm just going to dab all the wet spots on my card. And now I'm not concerned with the floral stamp getting wet as well and that, you know, having some water drops on it because it is a background and I like that effect on this background. So now I've pulled out the three different washi tapes that come in the pack. You actually get four, but the fourth one is fairly wide. So I'm just gonna use the three narrow ones and I'm starting with the um, widest of the narrow ones and I'm just going to tear the edge off at an angle. I just want it to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want some sort of angle in my tape when I start it. So once I get the angle on the end of the tape like I like, then I'm just going to attach it to the card. And so I don't have any specific spot on this card that I'm attaching it. I'm just eyeballing where I think it will look best. And so I'm just going to, it was about a quarter of an inch from the edge, quarter to a half inch, maybe even a half inch from the edge that, um, now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it's, it's at least a half inch from the edge that I'm adding the washi tape. And then I'm going to use my stamp block to, acrylic stamp block to just tear the washi tape at an angle. I want it all to be at an angle as it goes across my card. So then I'm just going to come back in with the next width of what is a little bit narrow washi tape from this pack and I'm just going to add it to the front of my card as well and I'm going to make this piece just a little bit longer than the one before and I love this washi tape it's absolutely gorgeous I love washi tape anyway but the 49 and market washi tape is so beautiful and um, we get them in the shop from time to time but they seem to sell out so fast that I hadn't um, had a chance to really play with them. So this time when I saw them come into stock, I made sure that I got my order in really quickly so that I could get some of this washi to play with. And we do have several different collections of 49 and Market in the shop right now. So um, I decided to go with this collection this month, but I'm super excited about all the collections that are in stock. So you can see here when I used my Stampin' Block, I had a little brown ink left on it. It left a little splatter on my card, not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come back with my paintbrush with a little water on it. I'm going to put more of the brown ink onto my Stampin' Block. It was on there from another project and I forgot to wipe it down. So when I press down to tear the tape, somehow I've got that on there. So the card's not lost. We'll just come back with some brown splatters to make that fit in. And I have to be honest, this mistake, I think actually made the card even better. I love the additional brown splatters on this card. I think it um, brought out some of the browns in the tape and I, I like how it turned out. So the card was not lost because of a messy mistake. Now you can see I am cleaning the block off with a wipe this time so that I don't get any more brown paint or brown ink anywhere that I don't want it. So I'm just gonna come in with the Happy Birthday Magnolia stamp and I love the font on this stamp so that's why I chose it this month to use. And I always test my stamps out, since this was the first time that I was using it, using it, I always test it out on a piece of scrap paper before I stamp on my good paper. So I've just gone and cut a little strip from some cardstock that I had, and just some scrap cardstock that I had around, and I thought it went good with these colors. And so I'm just going to stamp the happy birthday onto this strip, and I didn't cut the strip down to the exact size I wanted. I wanted to stamp it first and then decide how wide I wanted it. So I'm just gonna go back and trim some of the edge off and then I'm going to trim a little bit off the top of this strip as well because it's a little bit wider than I was wanting it to be. Now, if you stamped perfectly in the middle and um, you wanted to cut yours, you would need to cut top and bottom. I was not perfectly in the middle, so it didn't matter just to cut the top off. So then I'm coming back with my, um, I think this is like a banner punch. I'm not sure what you call that but it cuts the little V out of your little strip. So I'm just going to cut that out and then I'm going to staple this little banner to my card. And I'm just using any stapler that I have around. These have some weird looking staples in them, but I'm okay with that. It adds a little bit more texture to it, but any staple would work to staple it down. So I'm not sure which color card I should attach it to, 
This is an ivory whitish color card. I think it looks good on it, but I'm thinking that it will pop more on the black card base. And in hindsight, I wish I had ordered some of the paper from this collection because I think it would have looked really good to just create my own card base using the colors, the uh, paper from this collection. I think that would look good as the background too. But if you're like me and you didn't get that ordered in time before it sells out, then the black looks great too. I think the black makes it pop as well. Now you will add, have to add quite a bit of glue to this because you have that staple that's adding a little bit of um, making the card stick up a little bit from the card base. So you'll just have to work with it, add a lot of glue, and then just press down really good. Now, be sure that you give your card time to dry, everything on it dry, before you do this. My card had had plenty of time to dry, so if yours hasn't dried, let it dry or you'll smear all the ink around. I'm also going to come back. I realize that that little banner is just way too loose, so I'm just going to come back and add a little glue under the banner just to hold it down tighter so that it doesn't move too much. I'm afraid that it will get ripped off when somebody opens the envelope. So here is the completed card. This card actually came together very quickly and you could make a lot of these in one sitting. I just wanted to make one with you all today and I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I hope that you've enjoyed this quick little tutorial and thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.